Hey Flosstube, it's Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. I'm back for my 13th video. It's been a, about three weeks since my last video. I had a lot of fun over the Christmas holidays, so I'm sorry it didn't, I should have gotten back sooner, but I really enjoyed my time off. So um, we start back. I mean, I have meetings the, uh, the rest of this week. It's Tuesday, January 9th. I was, I worked pretty much all day yesterday and you know, back to work. But classes do not begin until a week from today. And as long as I'm not in the classroom, I can do whatever kind of work. I'm fine. But once I get back in the classroom, then I feel like I'm really back at work. And I have 500 students. No, not quite that many. I think 470 is the number of students I have this semester. So fun, fun. It'll be an adventure. Um, spring semester goes super fast. And the, the at USM though because we have a holiday every time you turn around because since we're close to New Orleans we take off Mardi Gras we have spring break we have Good Friday and then semester's over so the spring semesters go super fast plus I have a couple of retreats that I'm going to and then there's market which I'm all excited about um so it's going to be a good fun semester um this video, I have lots of things I want to share. Okay, I'm going to have to do it in segments because I have to clean up a mess and then get the next set of things out. But I want to show you the what I got for Christmas. I want to show you my finishes for 2017. I want to show the um, Year of Whips projects that I've selected, and I'll explain the Year of Whips when I get to that. It's an online Facebook group many of you are familiar with. And then I also want to show some of the other crafting things I've been doing because I showed some of those in my last video and I've been doing even more over the holidays. I have had some fun this December. So um, first I need to, to announce the winners of my giveaway. So I had a giveaway in my last video. You guys were hilarious with the way you worked in the different words so that no one knew that it was a giveaway. And um, entered the different drawings. So I had four different drawings and the winners are... For the Garden Birds kit is Patty McReynolds. Congratulations, Patty. For the Do Your Best, Lizzie Kate. Um, the winner was Nancy King. Congratulations, Nancy. For the Lizzie Kate housework, it was Trixie Stitches. And for the cat um, notebook cover type pattern, um, the winner was Simunaya. It's S-I-M-U-N-A-Y-A. -A. She comments on all of my videos, but I've never pronounced the name, so I hope I did that correctly. I made comments on all of their comments on the last video, so hopefully they'll contact me. If you um, contact me, just contact me. You can either through Instagram. I'm, I'm Jen Stitching Niche on Instagram, or I'll leave a link to my Etsy shop below, and you can just contact me through that Etsy shop as well but I'd love to get those mailed out to you. So thank you for entering. That was so much fun. Lots and lots of comments. So um, I guess I'll get to Christmas. Let me do my Christmas gifts. So first of all, many of you know that Teresa and I did an exchange. We stitched projects for each other. I gave her the Noel sampler from um, Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread, and it's stitched in DMC. So Teresa showed that on her last video. So if you go over to Kitten Stitcher, you can see her wonderful videos. And she did a tutorial also. Her latest video is a tutorial of stitching in hand. Several of you asked me about that. I'm like, Teresa told me she was doing a tutorial. I'm like, great, because people have commented asking for a tutorial, and I just don't think I have it in me to do a tutorial. Plus, I don't have the the setup. I use my computer to videotape these. So, so Teresa did it. Great teacher. Go over and watch that. And if you watch the video before that, you can see her, um, the Noel sampler that I stitched for her. I loved it. It's so pretty. And then this is what she stitched for me. Isn't that beautiful? I love the colors. This is so Jennifer. My favorite part are all those teeny, teeny, tiny cardinals. I just love this. And I'm not putting it up for Christmas. I'm leaving it out all year round because I just think it's beautiful. Thank you, Teresa. She's a good stitching buddy. Beautiful. Um, my husband gave me a rug hooking frame. So I've been obsessing about rug hooking, but I'm one of those people. It takes me a lot of, iner you know, I got a lot of inertia to overcome to get something started. So 
I've got everything in place. I just need to get it going. I need a foundation uh, for the a rug. My, I've got the that coming. Teresa's got a copy, or excuse me, got a foundation of a rug she and I were going to do together. So I got a rug hooking frame that's on a floor stand. So this is it. This is a little practice project I was starting. But oh my goodness, these are pokey. Oh, it's kind of like the smallpox shot where they have all those little tiny needles that they poke you. You could probably vaccinate a whole bunch of people if we still that, did that with this thing. But that is my rug hooking frame. It's on a floor stand, but it also came with a lap stand. My husband, I just wanted the one with the lap stand, but he's like, oh, you need the both stands. So I'm like, all right, fine. So it's from Kay's Creation, and I'm excited about it. So that is my big Christmas present, what we call the Santa Claus present. And he also got me Mary Poppins. So you could probably tell I love things with big black eyes. I've got Lala Loopsies, which I love Lala Loopsies. I've collected them when they were out before, and now they don't have them anymore. That makes me super sad. But I've got lots of Lala Loopsies, and I love the little, like, Tsum Tsums. You can see some up there on that shelf right there. There's Buzz and Woody. And I love the little stuffed animal ones. There's the alien. And I love pop vinyl figures. Our uh, we have a, a small, what we call the library downstairs. And we've got all our books there. But I also have all my pop vinyl figures. So he got me that. So thank you, Hobby. Um, my boys each went Christmas shopping on their own this year. I know that's sad. They're grown but we've never made them do their own shopping. We just did it for them because we're enabling parents. But anyway, I told them they both have jobs now. I'm like, you have to buy your own Christmas presents. You buy this, this, you know, buy something for your dad, your mom, your brother, and then whoever else you want to. They did a good job. Nicholas, my younger son, got me earrings, which are really pretty. Um, he was so excited. He couldn't wait. He had to tell me that he used a coupon and got them cheaper at JCPenney. I'm like, oh. That makes me I'm so proud of you. So when I got his Christmas present using a coupon, I had to, to explain that to him too. He was impressed. And then my young, my older son, Patrick, who is a little bit OCD, and he's one of those hand washers. He washes his hands all the time. He asked me what I want, and I said, well, go to bed, uh, you know, Bath and Body Works. I love body wash. He got me hand soap, so <laughs> that was so sweet. But that's what I got from my OCD son. Um... It was a good Christmas. We had a really good Christmas. It was very low-key, uh, and we did not... I usually have a big Christmas Eve party at my house, and I didn't decorate very much this year, and I did not have that party. My sister decided that if I wasn't going to do it, she had a kind of appetizers get-together at her house, and it was fun. I enjoyed going to somebody else's house. I enjoyed not having to stress about cleaning up and cooking and all of that, so... And then Christmas Day, we went to my parents and had a really nice meal and came home. It was very relaxing, so I enjoyed Christmas. Um, I also spent the week between Christmas and um, New Year's cleaning out my craft room and kind of reassessing what I've got. And I've gone through a lot of my whips, uh, not whips, my finishes, and I'm you know, trying to decide what I'm going to do with all of those. So hopefully over the course of 2018, you're going to see a lot of FFOs of things that have been sitting around way too long. But what I'm going to do in the rest of the video, I want to show my finishes for 2017, which I'm going to do next. And then I also want to show my choices for the year of whips challenge that Melanie is doing on Facebook with the Soulful Stitchers. And um, I also want to show you some other crafting things that I've been doing. So I'm going to get to the um, finishes for 2017. And I've just got a pile of things here. And as I pull them up, I was going to show them in the order that I finished them. But it's just a mess. So I'm just going to show you them as I pull them off the pile. And, um, mm, oh well, I'll just do it that way. So... No, I'm going to do them in the order because that way I know I showed them all to you. So my first finish of 2017 was the 1801 house from Chessie and me. 
and I finished it as called for. It came with a little paper, uh, you know, paper mache box. And I just love these Chessy and Me kits. I've done several of them. They always come with the little box top, and then you also get the little scissor fob. So cute. Love that. And I started off the year by finishing it and FFOing. Didn't do that all through the year. Cat hair. So that's my first finish. I finished that on the 10th of January. Another finish was another Chessie and Me. This is all Hallow's Eve. And I just framed it in this little frame I got at a garage sale. And that's stitched in silks, I believe. My dog's over here sleeping and she's growling in her sleep. I finished that on the 16th of January. On another finish that is not FFO is The Witch's Hat by Sam Sarah. I love this. I just love all the different things in the hat. And I finished that on February 4th. Um, let's see, where did I put that? Like I said, I'm trying to, I've tried to FFO things, but I kind of lost my groove on that. But another finish that I FFO'd, this was Homespun Elegance Be Happy. And I just finished it as the little heart pillow. And I hang this in my dining room downstairs, just on one of the knobs of the buffet. So that's super cute. And I finished that on February 4th as well. So I finished two things on the 4th of February. On the 22nd of February, I finished Little House Needleworks um, Birdhouse Alphabet. It was a little chart that came with silk thread. I actually don't end two buttons. I don't have that anymore. So that one's out of my house. Um, on the 27th of February, I finished a Birds of a Feather called Poor Jack. And I didn't do the whole chart. I just did this part and then finished it as this little flat mounted piece. And I've shown that before and it usually sits back here behind me. So you've probably seen that one. Um, on March 18th, I finished Threadworks Primitive's Christmas Fruit Basket. And just finished that as a mounted flat piece. I like this. And it usually hangs on this doorknob behind me. I didn't get it out for Christmas. It hung right there all during Christmas. Let's see. I think I left. Oh, yeah, it's up there. Hold on one second. This is Christmas Peacock Sampler. A lot of over one stitching. I wind about this some. Um, and I finished this March 26th. Finished it as a little pillow too. On April 16th, I finished the September Cottage from Country Cottage Needleworks. And it's in the process of being finished as a no so cube. I still need to find the perfect trim. Another Chessie and Me finish on the 16th of April. I also finished the Autumn Sewing Book. Look at that squirrel. And FFO did as well. Comes with a little scissor fob. As you can tell, I love Chessie and Me. On April 22nd, I finished Crow on a Pumpkin. This was in a Just Cross Stitch Halloween book or magazine. On May 22nd, this is where you can start to see I had all those FFOs and then I'm re, you know, reassessing what I really want to do. And I finished, in my opinion, finished Little House Needleworks Gingerbread Trio on May 22nd. And I just didn't want to stitch all three of them. I'm like, I'll just turn this into an ornament. I think it's cute. And it makes me happy. On May 30th, I finished Matilda Hornbuckle. This is in a Just Cross Stitch magazine from Not Forgotten Farm. 
And I just love this. I need to get her frame. She makes me happy. On June 14th, I finished one Blackbird by Threadwork Primitives. And I don't have that. I sent that to Kathy, one of my friends. That's all, we're also doing um, staff and floor exchanges. On May 3rd, I finished... Let me find this. It's in my... I think it's in here. There it is. It's part of the Brooks Books Wizard of Oz set. I finished the Mad Hatter. So cute. Another finish. This is a Stacy Nash finish in June. This is, what's it called? Halloween Jack. I just need to finish this as a little flat piece, just a mounted piece. In July, I finished Blackbird Designs Home of the Brave. This is one of my favorite finishes for 2017. It's stitched on the week's gingham, and I used wool, Gentle Arts wool thread, and I just think it is beautiful. I'm going to get the perfect frame for that, too. need to put that out to get the frame soon. Also in July, I finished this Birds of a Feather Alphabet sampler, and this one I struggled with, but I finally finished that thing. And it's on the Call Forth fabric, which is Sparrow, I believe, from Birds of a Feather. Not available anymore. On Also in July, I finished the Quaker Pumpkin from the 2016 Halloween Countdown Stitchy Box. I stitched this on the purple fabric last of 2016 and sent it as a gift to my friend Kathy as well. And then I decided to stitch it for myself. I love that. Okay. I don't think I pulled that one out. Yeah, I did. This is Erica Michaels, the Honeybee Strawberry. I finished that in July as well. And then I, I was on a honeybee kick. This is in the summer when we were working the bees all the time. So I also finished Not Forgotten Farms Bee Sampler in July on the 16th. In August on the 5th, I finished Little House Needlework Summer Splendor. I don't have that one anymore. It's out of my house. August 5th, I also finished... Where is it? I know I pulled it over here. Old Colonials Mimi's measuring tape or tape measure. I love this. A lot of over one stitching, but it is so pretty. I love these kind of fussy finishes. And then in July, I also finished this. This is Nerd Pillow Majora's Mask. I finished that for my son, and it's FFO'd. I haven't let him take it with him yet because I wanted to show you but he was super happy with that so in August I finished the Just Nan, Just Nan Miss Witchy Mouse isn't that cute I love these little like I said these little fussy finishes I'll do those but I won't finish the little simple ones August 30th, I finished Olga's Tart from Plum Street Samplers. August 31st, I finished Delivering Autumn by Homespun Elegance. I still need to put the wheels on that cart. And then, I don't have it over here. I finished Tulip House by Blackbird Designs. I'm finishing then that as called for. I'll just be back. But it's going to be mounted on one of these little wood boxes from Hobby Lobby. But that's the Tulip House. And my plan is to finish these types of things over the next couple of weekends. So hopefully I'll have fully finished objects to show you soon. Um, in August, 
I finished Raise the Roof, the Halloween Sleepy Hollow sampler, excuse, excuse me. So pretty. And the next day, I finished Lottie Da Pumpkins 3. And one of my cats was sleeping on it. There we go. Cute. In October, I finished this from Turner Coton. It's M O N, Mon Bo S A P I N. S S A P I N? I don't know. And then another finish, which I, this is exciting. Let me show you what I'm going to do with this. Okay, so we're all into the Chelsea and Priscilla finishes. So this is Halloween Rules. And I'm in the process of finishing it. Center it. But it's going to be mounted like this. On this board thing that I got at Hobby Lobby in the unfinished wood and just painted it. I painted it with chalk paint, but I don't I don't like it. I think I'm gonna spray paint over it with a light, just flat black. But that is my Halloween rules. This was a um a stitch along or round robin that I did with my sister. So we all three of us stitched on this one piece and both of my sisters have the same project on the same fabric. And I showed this to them this weekend, and they're like, and we're going to finish it the same. My younger sister, Bridget, said, down there, we should mount a little basket and fill it with candy. Great idea. So that is an almost FFO. So that was Lizzie Kate's Halloween Rules. I finished that on October 29th. Um, on... November 10th, I finished Caroline Behringer by Summerhouse Stitchworks. And this is stitched in the wools as well. Love this. And I had this frame in my stash of, of thrift store finds, and it's perfect. Um, also in November, I finished a couple of small things. This is Enchanted Pumpkin from one of the Just Cross Stitch magazines. And on the same day, I finished another from the Just Cross Stitch Halloween. I think this is 2016. It's Frosted Pumpkin. What is it called? Trick or Treat Pass. That's cute. Then December 4th, I showed this on my last video. I finished this piece from Amonami Pierre. Trousseau something. But I love this. I'm going to finish that as a notebook cover. Um, also in November, I finished a little Quaker ornament that I gave away at an exchange at one of Katrina's retreats. And if you want to see that, um, Marlene from Stitching by the Lake was the one that got that. Um, so that made me super happy. Um, on December 24th, before Christmas, I finished the Noel Sampler for Teresa. If you want to see that, go to Kitten Stitcher and look at that. And then my last finish, I counted these as four different finishes because they were four different charts. But overall, on Christmas Eve, no, New Year's Eve, I finished Santa's Village. And those of you that follow me on Instagram saw this and cheered me on that last week. So I counted those last four houses at the bottom is four different finishes. And that puts me at 42 finishes for 2017, which my son was like, 42 is the answer to everything in the universe. I know that's not the exact same quote, but one of our um, floss tubers, Lily at 42 stitches, I think. She knows what I'm talking about. But then I, when I was getting ready for this, I found that I had more than 42 because... This is a finish, even though it's not the whole chart. This is from Where There Are Bees from Prairie Schooler. I finished that. I'm going to mount it. And now I've got a special way of displaying these little bee things. I'll show you in just a minute. But, and this is, the, I 
I order this chart all the time when I sell out. I tried to reorder it from Hoffman and it's no longer listed. So, mm. and then another one are, there's three pumpkins and I, I think it's like Peddler Grove. I don't remember, but there's three pumpkins and you mount them. I finished two of those pumpkins. So if I count each one of these, that actually puts me at 45 finishes for 2017. So that makes me super happy. Um, 2018, I'm going to finish even more. And I think a lot of it has to do with number one, floss tube. I love you guys. This has been the best thing for 2017 is being uh, participating and getting to know so many great people through floss tube. It motivates me to cross stitch. It makes me happy to cross stitch. And it, I don't get frustrated when I don't finish because everybody's really supportive. Um, and obviously, because I have a hundred and something whips. Um, the other thing is doing the rotation that I kind of adapted from Katie the Stash Queen, where I stitch on a focus piece for three days, and then I stitch on a whip every day. And that way I'm touching lots of different things and I'm not losing my interest. Everything's, there's something new every day. And I think that has a lot to do with my process. I started the year with 121 whips. I ended the year with 103 whips, so I'm less. And that means I started 20-something. I did start a bunch of stuff in Stitch Mania, but I'm getting a lot finished. Um, this year, I'm doing a similar type of program. I'm going to focus on something, but the focus is going to be one of the 18 projects that I selected for um, the year of whips. And then I'm going to stitch on something different every day, just randomly select it from my whip pile. Um, when I finish one of those year of whips, I have a week dedicated to it. If I finish it, then I can pick up anything I want to stitch, which has been great. Um, I did have a new start at the beginning of the year, January 1st. I started just a little Lizzie Kate hip hop um, piece, and I'm going to do a new start the 9th of every month. So I get to start something new today because my birthday is February 9th. So I'm like picking the 9th as my new start day. Um, Today I'm going to start the Ort Basket by Brenda Gervais that was released last year. But I'm going to do, at least for the first six months, something small. Um, again, it's just been fun getting to stitch on all these things that I've had in my piles for years. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause, clean up, and then I'm going to get out my year of whips to show you. Okay, so... The 2018 Year of Whips is sponsored by Melanie at Soulful Stitcher. Thank you, Melanie, for doing that. And essentially, you pick 50, at least 15 projects that you're going to work on over the course of the year. You have to do a, an album on the Facebook group before January 18th or do a video, and I'm doing both. And then starting January 18th, you stitch on these on April, July, in October, you have to do an update album on the Facebook group. And if you follow all of the instructions in December, if you finish 50% or more, so that would be nine or more in my case, then you can, um, you'll be entered into a drawing. So I, it's 2018, so I selected 18 different projects. So I'm going to show them to you. So, and mine are, if it's a series, I'm using the whole series as one whip because I want to get these series completed. My first one is The Word Play by Brenda Gervais. So this is an example. This is December. I have stitched, what is it? I've stitched nine of these. And I want to finish the other three. I have December, August, and September. Well, I started January 1st working on December, and I finished it. So this doesn't get counted into the year of whips because it starts on the 18th, but I still have the other two that I'm going to be working on. So it's still in the grouping. But these are really cute. And what I do with these, where did I put that? Let me find my mess. Oh, there it is behind, behind you. I saw this at a um, market back when these were first released. These were released back in 2012. Um, because what do you do with 12 of these? And I love monthly series. If you haven't noticed, I like to do, you know, 12 month things or seasonal things. So Kathleen at um, Kathleen's Trot and Trail, 
I hear you. She mentioned she loved doing those types of things. Me too. So I saw this at a market. One of the shops was showing the, the way to display it. These were at Hobby Lobby years ago. They're just metal signs. And I bought this one and painted it with this kind of forest green color. And then I just mount the finished pieces. I um, iron interfacing on the back of it. And then I just mount them on a piece of felted wool. And they're just attached with little tiny magnets. And I hang this on the desk at our back door. I need to dress it up a little more now. This looks very plain. It was gorgeous before Floss Tube 2017, Priscilla and Chelsea. But I'm going to get something to put on a little, what I need to do is get some little type of decorative thing to clip on, you know, different ones. Now I can't just, this isn't enough. I'm like, oh, I've got one, but not of them, all of them are gonna look pretty on this color. So I would just, when I saw them at Hobby Lobby, I would pick them up. So I have another one that's green and another one that's orange. And these were seven bucks back in the day. And of course I probably did not get them pay full price. I probably got them on clearance. So I have that and of course I have it set up where it was working great. I displayed them last year, June through July. And then when I got to August I didn't have it finished so I pulled them down. So this year I will have the, the last two, August and September, finished by August and September. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is a big one but I really want to finish this. This is Grace Bridges. By Stacy Nash Primitives, and I've shown this before, and I've talked about how much I love it. That yellow house is what's got me kind of stumped right now. Because once I get through that yellow house, it's just a bunch of quirky peacocks in a wagon with horrible wheels, you know, pumpkin wheels. I can get through this. So this is another year of whips. That's how far I've gotten. Isn't this going to be gorgeous? Oh, this. I've got to get through it. So y'all cheer me on again like you did for the Christmas Village, Santa's Village. The third is one that I have stitched on so many times and I just, I don't know why I can't get through it. It's a cute piece, but I've got literally half of it done. <laughs> but it's Cherry Hollow Farms by Stacy Nash. This was a limited edition kit that was put out by Norton Craft. And, um, you know, they're closed now. And I had lots of these in my shop, but I'm sold out of them. But it'll be cute when I'm finished. 2018, it's going down. Fourth is the Erica Michaels sampler book. I have finished all of the pages, and I've shown, the, shown those in a previous video. All I have left to do is the cover. So it's this on the front, and then there's a number on the back. I've got the back started. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to have it FFO'd in time for the state fair. Number five is Hillside Sheep Needle Book by Chessie and Me. I have finished all of this. I just need to do the alphabet, and then I can FFO it. Going down, 2018. Number six is Cat and Mouse by Kathy Barrick. I've shown this multiple times. I'm close. Number seven is the Garden Club series from Blackbird Designs. I got a great start on this when I first started it. Went through the first six, and then I just stalled. So I just have six more to go. And these are fast stitches. Just need to get them done. So it's a focus piece for 2018. And I'm stitching these. I'm doing a silk conversion. So it's going to be beautiful. And each block, I'm putting the initials of some important woman in my life. I need to, I mean, it's a great idea. I just need to finish it. Um, the next one is the Cottage of the Month series, excuse me, by Country Cottage Needleworks. 
I have lots of these. I think I have like six of them left. Half of them left. The whole thing is one whip, though. If I don't finish them all, I don't consider that finish. Because I'm tough on myself. Um, next is the Autumn Band Sampler by Little House Needleworks. You can see there's the winter sampler right there. And I love seasonal things. I want to have all four of them finished, framed side by side. So I've just got the last half to do. So I've got all of that done. I just need to finish this. Um, next is the Gingerbread Stitching House by Vic the Victoria Sampler. I've done the front, the back, and the two sides. I just need to do the roof and the chimney part and put it together. That would be so cute sitting out Christmas. Next up is another Brenda Gervais. This is the Sampler of the Seasons. I have two of these done and framed in my living room. I want to finish these other two. And this is the autumn. It's The autumn is on my year of whip, so a little more than half to go. Well, if you consider how many stitches that lawn and the house has, yeah, it's going to be about half. So cute, though. The colors are beautiful. Next up is Madame Cottontail by Brenda Gervais. And I'm not going to show you how far. I just have her shoulder. So, but that should be a pretty fast stitch. Another Brenda Gervais, Mary Noel. And I have half of this done. And I love this. I love stitching on it. I haven't stitched many days on it, but I just love working on it. Because the colors are beautiful. So, it's on my year of whips. Wouldn't it be great if I finished all 18 of these? Oh, that would be so exciting. And that's number 13. Number 14 is Wee Beasties 3. It's the Ladybugs. I'm fortunate enough to have these charts. I should finish them instead of just holding on to them while people, while people pay ridiculous prices for them. So, I'm going to stitch these. And I have a start. I have just, and this is all DMC. That is amazing to me. It looks like it's sparkly and glowing, but it is just DMC. This man was an amazing designer. I wish we could get his charts more easily. That one's going to get finished this year. Um, 15 is a Not Forgotten Farms. It's summer filled, and this is one of those where the chart cover is very misleading because it's not that pretty on that picture, but oh my goodness, when you stitch it up, it's gorgeous. The colors are beautiful. It's all DMC. I want to finish that because I have a very special, I can't wait to show you, very special display for all of my honeybee stuff. My husband told me last night that he plans on more than doubling our our number of hives Nick, this spring, which I don't mind. I love working bees, so it's it'll be fun. But that's going to be a lot of honey. Um, number 16 is another Not Forgotten Farm. It's Blue Belschnickel, which I love this. I mean, this is one of the few that I became super obsessed with, trying to find that chart. And I found it. And now I'm going to finish him. Have him on my mantle with my other Santas next year. And then number 17 is Bird's Eye View. I'm not going to show you because I just have the outline of the tail. But I'm stitching it on 40 count. You can see just a little bit of the tail. It's going to be 290. Tiny, tiny. And then the last, the 18th whip that I'm going to focus on this year is the 12 Days of Christmas Sewing Roll by Stacy Nash. And I've shown this multiple times in older videos. But it's just beautiful. Wouldn't this be pretty as a table runner? Just beautiful. So that's my year of whips. 
and each what I'm doing is I'm spending a week on each one and then I rotate to another one I just have I have them listed here in my my planner and I just say hey Javi that's my husband's name pick a, a random number between 1 and 18 and whatever he picks that's what I stitch on so this week I'm stitching on the autumn band sampler but I'm not gonna finish it I'm only stitching on a little bit every night because I can't have it finished before the 18th because officially this all starts on the 18th of January on Melanie's birthday so so that's my year of whips plans for this all back there sorry you're sitting on several boxes on my the bed in my craft room so that was a little shaky so the last few things I want to show you I have been crafting like a crazy woman um, I cleaned up my craft room sort of um, Michelle Farm Girl, I watched your video last night with your craft room redesign, and I was like, I want to redo my craft room like that. It's beautiful. And then I'm also like, oh, I want to start doing that kind of crafting stuff. So um, I did clean my craft room up. I know it still looks crazy here, but the area back there, I pulled out things that I had in boxes, and I just piled up projects and said, I want to finish these things over the course of the, my holiday. And I got lots of things done my um i can't remember the designer that's mo released through moda it's a designer that makes these little cloth dolls they always have little skirts and a little blanket and a little pillow that goes with them and um i made four sets for my niece she's three years old so i made the hansel and gretel set she got two dolls each doll had a stuffed animal and they had a blanket and pillow she loved that I made her Coral the Mermaid, so it's a little mermaid. She has a blanket, a pillow, and a stuffed seahorse. And she has a dress and the mermaid tail. I made her the superhero set, so it was a boy and a girl superhero. Those were hard to stitch, though, because they printed that on different, much tougher fabric. And, oh, my gosh, I didn't think I could get those little legs turned. Um, so that's three. And then I stitched her a little butterfly that was super cute as well. So those are all out. I sent those off to, gave her a bag full of them. She was so excited. And then I also worked on another project. So I'm going to show you what I used first. And then I'll show you how beautiful this turns out. This is a product called Ten Sisters Easy Piecing. It's interfacing that is gridded. And you cut your little squares out and you iron them. So you get to see how you're going to lay it out and you iron them onto this grid and then you just fold on those lines and stitch on the lines and once you've stitched all the lines this way you go and clip at the corners and then you turn it and you stitch them this way and it's super fast piecing of one of those little tiny square quilts now this is the again it's 10 sister handicraft that's the name of the company and this is the Ten Sister Easy Piecing material. This is makes a one inch finished grid. I had another piece that came out with two inches. So I made this. Isn't that a beautiful? This is just scrap fabrics that I had in my closet over here, full of fabrics. And I just cut out a bunch of them and pieced it and quilted it. And I did this before breakfast. My sisters always give me a hard time because, I mean, I cut it, pieced it, quilted it, did the binding all in one morning. And they're always fussing at me because I'm, I'm a doer. We call my younger son the doozer, like from Fraggle Rock, because he's always doing something. Well, he gets it from me because I'm always doing something. I have to be busy. And I finished this, and I'm like, I told my husband, I said, I think I'm going to send this a picture of this to Bridget and say, look, I finished a quilt before breakfast. But it's a little mat. My plan is to, I got one of those felt trees. If you're on a lot of the felt Facebook groups, they've been showing these felt trees. I've got the kit to make one of those felt trees. And I'm going to put this on the table with my felt tree. And I've got several felt Santa Clauses. Beautiful display for next year. So that got me started on obsessing about those little quilts. And I'm like, I need to do more decorating in my house. I told my husband, I'm going to Priscillify, Chelsea and Priscillify our house. He said, what does that mean? I said, I'm going to make it so beautiful you can barely walk through the house. He's like, 
Okay. So we have a dining room table in our kitchen area that was my parents. I love this table. My dad refinished it. It looks very old. And I'm, I'm like, I'm going to make a new table runner because we're beekeepers. I want it to be bee um, themed. So I have a bunch of bee fabric that I haven't done anything with. I'm like, I'm going to use that to make one of these little quilted table runners. So I did. And it's not as well finished. That's the back. But this is my table runner. Isn't it pretty? So that lays on the dining room table. And I'm like, well, I need, I wish I had another dough bowl. Because I have a bread, you know, bisc what we call a biscuit bowl, my great-grandmother's. And my sister sent me a message the same day. I said, I wish I had another one. She said, hey, did you see someone in the, um, you know, buy, sell, and trade has some of those bowls you like on sale? They're only $20. I'm like, oh, that's not going to be. Oh, my gosh. I drove out to the middle of nowhere, Perry County. Maybe I still was in Forest County. But anyway, I shouldn't have been out there by myself. I was on the phone with my sister the whole time so she could at least ping my phone if I disappeared. Um, I got this bowl. And I got this one. So these are real old dough bowls. And I got a third wooden bowl that's from the 70s. All three of them for 20 bucks. Deal of a lifetime. I was so excited. So that... Well, the big one sits on this little mat that I made in, on my dining room table. And I'm going to fill it with bee stuff. And I'm like, you know what I need? I need one of those bee scabs to put in there. I was telling Teresa, she said, well, just make one. You can go on YouTube and look at, you know, beehive or bee skip, and they show how to make one. And I Googled it. And I found a tutorial where you make one out of just this sisal rope or from Walmart. So I got this for five bucks, a, a roll of this rope, used my glue gun, and I made a bee skin. Isn't that cute? And then I'm going to just fill it with bee themed smalls. Does the shape look familiar? I needed a mold, so I used my KitchenAid stand mixer, the, the bowl out of it. Just wrapped it around it in one morning. Spent I made less than 30 minutes. See, does that make you want to make a cake? But I just, I need to trim that off, Donnie. But I think it's so cute. So I did that. And then my other obsession, I showed these, the kit, those sequin ornaments. So I have, I got a kit through Hershner's. And I finished the houses. So that's two of the houses. And then this is the third house. So the kit came with the three house molds and then two little trees. And this is what I love the most. These are little bell caps that you stick on there with the sequence so it makes it three dimensional. It's like little bushes on the outside of the house. And I did finish the tree. It's sitting over there. I guess I'll get that since I've been standing up all along. And then there's the tree. So I'm leaving these out for winter because these are winter theme, not necessarily Christmas theme. So I'm going to put those on my buffet, um, which that's got me obsessed with these. I'm like, I love doing these little sequin ornaments. So Hershner's has a ornament of the month club. I signed up for it for 2018. So I can't wait to get my first set of those. So that was a lot to show you in a very fast pace discussion, but I just wanted to touch base with everybody, share what I'm doing because of your inspiration and your encouragement. I've been watching a lot of floss too, because I can set up my iPad up here in the craft room and watch it, or I can go downstairs and watch TV. I watch most of it on my television. That's why I don't leave a lot of comments, but um, a lot of new people, a lot of my favorites are still making videos, you know, I do shout outs every time, but one of the new ones I've been watching, a couple of new ones I've been watching are Leslie Hurley. She makes me laugh. 
and she, I just think she's really sweet. And um, Holly and Anita, you know, they're it's a two teachers, um, very different personalities, but they complement each other very well. So that that's really fun to watch. Um, another one that I've watched for a while is Heidi Kranz. She's she loves the um, what I'm all into that Teresa started. And so she's really into what I'm all into. And she's always showing things that aren't necessarily stitchy related. And it's real fun. Cause I mean, I'm not a hot tea drinker, but I went and bought apple cinnamon hot tea. So celestial seasonings and had that last night. It was really good. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I love floss tube and I thank you all for sharing your love of cross stitch. I love watching people of different age groups. I love to see younger individuals sharing what they do. They, they don't necessarily cross stitch what I like to cross stitch, but they're passionate about it and they have wonderful ideas. A lot of the finishing ideas that are new to me come from younger people. So I love that. Um, I'm just excited. 2018 is going to be a great year and I've got a couple of retreats coming up. I can't wait to go to. I love Katrina Boyd's retreats. Um, and just, it's just going to be a fun 2018 crafty wise. Um, I always have to say something about my Etsy store. So if you haven't been to my Etsy store, please go. It's Jen Stitching Niche. I sell cross stitch patterns and threads and fabric. It's kind of an online cross stitch store. Um, you guys have been supporting me so well. Thank you. It makes it fun. I, um, am trying to get ready for market. So I'm trying to clear out a bunch of stuff. So if you haven't been by lately, go by and check out. I've marked a bunch of the raise the roof designs down, not the clotheslines or the fences. Those are too popular. And Teresa would bop me in the head if I was selling those for too, too low. But um, some of the other designs that are I've got lots of copies of, just go by and look. I did have a grab bag for $20. I marked that down. So Michelle at Bendy Stitchy, I'm trying to help you out with your stitching from stash. I got it marked much lower. So um, just a grab bag of, of Raise the Roof designs. But I um, hope everybody has a great January. Happy New Year. It's going to be a great year. 2018 is going to be a great crafting year. Um, I hope to see you guys in two weeks. I think my schedule, class schedule is set up that I can do these videos either on Wednesdays. Mondays or Wednesdays so I can get them posted pretty quickly. I'm going to say every two weeks. If I try to do it every week, it's not going to happen. So, But thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. You guys are great. Happy New Year.